YouTube is the toughest thing that I have ever done as a creator, but it's worth it. Today we're talking about the four most common fears of starting a YouTube channel. I'm gonna give you some personal examples. Three and four are my favorites, so make sure you stick around. And I just spilled all over myself. I have to tell you guys, I just got my wisdom teeth out, so I can't use a straw and half my face is numb. All right, number one, will I look dumb? Yes, you will look dumb if you're like me and spill coffee all over yourself. As a successful content creator here in my hometown of Salt Lake City, Utah, this is a question that I am asked uh, shockingly a lot. This is something that people want to know. So the only way that I got over my fear of looking dumb or feeling stupid when I would tell people that I had a YouTube channel that I was one day going to get to 10,000 subscribers and then up to 100,000 subscribers was to simply start on my YouTube channel and not listen to all of the soundless advice or the weird opinions that people had or my favorite, the people who give advice that say they're going to start a YouTube channel and never end up starting one. Unless you're talking to someone who has been there, done that with YouTube, who has the views, the subscribers, who has gained monetization, listen to those people. But for anyone else that is trying to be in your ear about what your niche should be, what you should be doing, how much you should be posting, if they haven't done any of that, whether on a personal level or a professional level, it doesn't matter and you shouldn't listen to them. And take this with a grain of salt, not everyone wants to see you succeed. Not everybody is your biggest fan. More people are satisfied with being proven right rather than being proven wrong. In the beginning, you're going to do a lot of things that will make you look dumb, make you look stupid. I remember when I first started this YouTube channel, I would just come hot out the gates and yell at the camera like I was Mr. Beast or something. But yeah, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't care about what other people think. As soon as you start to get traction, all of those people will come around. Anyone who thought you were stupid or dumb for starting a YouTube channel will start to congratulate you when they start to see your wins, when you get your 1,000 subscribers, when you get your 4,000 watch hours, when you get monetized. You know, people will start to change their tone and celebrate, and eventually they come to you for advice. And that takes me on to my next point, number two I do not know how to talk to a camera. I am camera shy, I suck in front of cameras, I will never learn how to do this properly, there's no use for me, I'm over it, I'm not going to get started, screw this, screw YouTube, I'm out of here. Talking to a camera can be one of the toughest things that you do, I get it, I understand it, I've been there, I am someone who likes to say um and like or uh or I'll just, you know, pause in between sentences. Think back to the times when you were a kid just riding a bike with training wheels or you needed assistance of your mom or your dad and eventually you became the best bike rider ever. I'm using a very simple, easy, relatable example like riding a bike just because I truly believe that it can be that easy for you. You just have to turn on the camera, talk to it, make some mistakes in the beginning and eventually with repetition, you'll be great at it. I do a lot of client work, a lot of interviews with people who I've literally met in a matter of minutes. And one thing that I tell them is to just treat the camera like another person in the room, just treat it like a friend, talk to it naturally, show it some love, just be yourself, just remove the pressure of it being an actual camera. And as soon as I say that to a client who is struggling through an interview, it is like night and day. They flip the switch, if you're able to see the camera like a friend, you will do so much better and you'll flow naturally. Number three fear of starting a YouTube channel is not having good equipment, not having the best camera, not having the best microphone. And I'm going to share with you one of the biggest mistakes that I did in this category that I regret because now I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers, a lot of successful creators who are literally getting hundreds of thousands of views simply by using one of these or one of these. This is like a GoPro. This is a cell phone, obviously. There are people driving serious engagement, serious views, serious subscribers by using the bare minimum. And that's something that I wish I would have known when I started because before I started my YouTube channel, personally and visually, just because I have a cinematic videographer background, I like to bring that to my YouTube. I like to use a really nice camera, filming this with a Sony FX3. And then down here for audio, I've got this uh, Zoom H6 recorder. But none of this matters if I don't have a good story to share, good tips to give, 
if I'm not relatable, if you guys don't like me, you guys won't care about how well the picture is. If you have an amazing, inspiring, insightful message to share with the world, a story to share that will help people, tips or advice that is going to change someone's life, then you don't need all of this, right? Like you don't need the $6,000 setup camera. And I know this firsthand because I work for a company where we've ditched a lot of our professional equipment and I'll roll out to interviews with something like this and the views will knock it out of the park. I am a full-time YouTube content marketer, so my job is to go out and interview people, put those stories together, and there's always one common factor that determines how well a video is going to do. And like I said before, no, it's not the $6,000 camera or the $300 GoPro. It's the story, the advice, the testimonials that I get from people who have tested and used our product that always knocks it out of the park. So if you're watching this video right now and you're guilty of using that excuse of, oh, I need the best camera, I need the best lens, I need the best this, 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 that, it's all bull crap. If you have a cell phone with video capabilities or if you can find a way to get $300 to buy yourself a GoPro, whether it's a credit card, I know Amazon has like monthly payments, then you really have no excuse to just get started. And I'm going to give you an example of someone who has 433,000 subscribers as of today recording this video and I know those numbers are only going to go up. Robbie Layton was a project that I got to go and hang out with for a few days and I remember being there as a camera operator and just kind of looking around and I noticed that me and my buddy who also works with me, we were the only ones shooting on like cinema cameras with like, you know, the big monitors and the big mics and the big V-mount batteries, right? Like easily a rig that's like $8,000. And what shocked me when I looked around was the fact that all of their videographers were using GoPros. They were just kind of running around with a GoPro like on a little floating stick. And at the moment, my perception was that if you were a YouTube channel with 400,000 plus subscribers, I thought that you were required, or at least that it was like YouTube mandated that you use like the best cameras, right? But this was early on into my YouTube journey and I just didn't understand. But finally I had a conversation with their video producer who was just a normal guy. I remember asking him, hey, I see a lot of GoPros around here. Like you've got three people running around with GoPros. What other cameras do you guys have? And I'll never forget this. He said, dude, it doesn't matter what cameras we use, we're using GoPros because what we've learned, what gets us the subs and what gets us the views is the storytelling. If you don't have storytelling, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, it doesn't matter if you have the best gear in the world, it's simply storytelling. If you have something interesting to share, a story to tell, I'm telling you once again, you don't need that excuse of, I need the best high quality gear. I just provided you with a real sample, a real story of someone today at 433,000 subscribers using $300 GoPros. And I've seen the YouTube revenue on channels that big, trust me, they can afford nice cameras, but they opt to stick with GoPros. Also on a related note, I just wanna show you this picture right here. This is Daryl Eves, he's like the YouTube godfather. Mr. Beast has called this guy basically the equivalent of a stepdad. Mr. Beast said that Daryl Eves is like the father he never had. He is also at the Robbie Layton shoot because that's a channel that he is involved with and I just had to ask him for a picture because that's like, that's the guy. That's the behind the scenes guy at YouTube. Well, he doesn't work for YouTube, but anyone who is a massive YouTuber, like think of your favorite content creator, probably has a relationship with this guy. Daryl leaves. And fear number four that you absolutely need to get over because it is just hindering you, it is sidelining you, it is getting you nowhere. You just have to get started. No one, not a single person in the history of any timeline, of any world, any universe probably, achieved something great by waiting for the perfect time. Procrastination is what? The enemy of all success the assassination of arriving to any destination. And guys, I am the biggest procrastinator. I promise you, I will wait till like the last day to get something done. I'm not this perfect content creator or this perfect YouTuber, some dude who went to school for videography. That's not me at all. 
I'm just a regular, normal dude sitting here at Starbucks telling you that you need to start your YouTube channel now. You need to start before you're ready and there are really no excuses to not getting started now. Think of anything that you can share. Any message that you have to motivate or inspire anyone. Set up your camera and talk like this. You guys have noticed there's not a lot of fancy editing. This kind of content that you're viewing right now that eliminates all of the crazy bells and whistles, the flashes, the explosions, all of those things that are meant to distract you, that stuff is dying on YouTube. And if you're afraid to start because you don't have the best camera, you're not good at editing, you might look dumb, you don't know how to talk to a camera, I'm here to tell you today that people want authenticity. They want to feel like they're just hanging out with you and having a coffee outside relaxing. I have 2,300 subscribers. When are you going to start your YouTube channel? Are you going to start it when I hit 10,000? Are you going to start it when I hit 50,000? I'm 35 years old. I was talking about starting a YouTube channel in my early freaking 20s. Imagine where I would be now if I had started 10 years ago. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want another five or 10 years to go by and just wondering what could have been. So I have one challenge, one request from you guys. Let me know in the comments the date that you are going to post your first YouTube video. I will be your first view, your first commenter, and your first subscriber. Do this with me right now. Do not get left in the dust. My name is Andy Munoz. I hand out content marketing, content creator, and YouTube tips. Watch more videos right here, and bless me with a subscribe.